We might start, Councillor, because it's on time. So I'd um, like to welcome everyone here. Mr Morhi, would you formally open our meeting? Thank you very much. Now, the first uh, thing, we'll take um, the apologies. Welcome, Mr. Jury. Um, we have apologies from Rick Barker. He's on um, election duty somewhere, Vanuatu or Papua New Guinea or Vanuatu, somewhere, some Hawaii. distant place. Um, so he's not here all week. So it's apologies from Rick. And we have an apology from Tom Belford. Uh, he is sick. Sounds pretty crook, too. Someone move to thank you, Fenton. Um, Councillor Bailey, second the apologies. All those in favour of accepting the apologies? Aye. Right. That's the first, um, for the record, the first apology that um, Councillor Barker's had formally recognised, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> That's not. Oh. Prior to that little spat he had. Yeah, a little sp <laughs> Prior to the little spat <laughs> that he had. Okay, um, notices. I have um, um, a couple of notices. We Hbrick um, want to come and see us, and there's been some confusion about that, but just to clarify, they want to come at 11 o'clock, and uh, they need to be prompt because Sam's got to get away to a board meeting. So whatever we're doing, um, we want to stop at 11 to allow them to come in and report to us and then move on. Okay? So... Let's not linger. Some of you will have noticed a painting in the in the foyer that was is on loan from the Napier portrait painter Freeman White. Um, he's gone overseas, and I asked if we could um, loan it for a while. It's been in my house, so I thought we'd hang it here. Um, I don't know when he's going to get it back, but he's a, he's overseas as well. Um, it, it's the type of painting that I was inclined to. Um, encourage, but it's only online to us. Um, Mr. Jury, this is your 18 years, and this is your last meeting with us. Your, is this your last meeting? <laughs> it's the red wine, mate. <laughs> so, um, Paul, I know some of your associates are coming in, but um, I just want to thank you for your your tremendous service to this council. We had a little bit of an interesting one last week because you had to scrap your way through and you proved to be as diligent and as clever at getting the extra mill as, as ever. Um, you've done a sterling job for the council over the years and um, um, I think you're having a few drinks tonight, are you? Okay. Do you want if I book a motel? Any, uh, anyway, we just want to acknowledge that the, the huge amount of work that you've done over the 18-year period um, for the citizens of Hawke's Bay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Alan, would you like to say something? Uh, <coughs> yes, Mr Chairman. Uh, it now um, appears that there is a, a vacancy on the rail familiarisation field trip uh, to Wairau and return on Friday uh, on the upward leg, which leaves... Um, the Napier Rail Depot at 7.30 on a Friday morning. Um, lunch at Whitwira District Council at midday and then um, a, a team from that end of eight people will proceed back down here. Um, the vacancy arises not because one of the, our committee participants has pulled out but uh, Liz Lambert had the view that um, the line should be videoed from a his historical viewpoint, but they can't find anyone from comms who's able to do that. So there is a vacancy, if anyone's interested. First first um, opportunity around this table, um, Councillor Bailey and Fenton. Uh, if 
there's no one around this table, then I'll probably take it a little wider. Take it wider, Al. Okay. Find some rail enthusiast in Napier. There's, Sorry? There's bound to be someone who's just dying oh, to I do that. I want people are going to get some benefit out of it because it's it's got two purposes. One is to look at the geography mm. of the mm. corridor from Napier to um, to Terra because of the, this proposal for rail to rail to road conversion, which is one of the um, responsibilities of Regional Transport Committee. And the other is just to get a feel for things mm. as they'll be when the, um, the log business resumes. Um, perhaps someone from the Napier City Council or Hastings City Council? Uh, we've, we've, got, we've got one. I'll, okay. I'll try for another one, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, there has been, uh, just in part in terms of notices, there has been um, some comment made about the length of our meetings and um, some time ago we tried to streamline it by um, assuming that everyone had read uh, the papers, which um, I'm sure they have, and getting the reports from staff, streamlining them and trying to get the questions more concise um, and moving through these especially today, when these are um, essentially issues that we've dealt through before. Um, I don't know how people feel about that, but I'd quite like to give it a trial today, and so I've discussed with our CEO if we can staff, and when they do it, they do an executive summary to, to um, the report, and no more than five minutes, and then we can go straight into questions, and um, we can carry on the formalities from there. So if everyone's happy with that, um, I'd like to proceed on that basis and just give it a go uh, for this meeting, just try and get through these meetings much quicker than we are doing, without obstructing discussion, which I definitely don't want to do. Okay? So, conflict of interests. Oh, first, are, are there any other notices? No? I'll move to conflict of interest. No new conflict of interests, I assume. Confirmation of the minutes. I'm going to take them as read. There's two lots. So we've got the minutes from um, 31st of May, which is our meeting, and then there's the minutes of the 12th of June. So minutes of the 31st, are there any... Um, Changes, additions. Thank you, yeah, all. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's just there was a mention that uh, there was a report to, about feedlots that was going to the Environment and Services Committee, and similarly with one on stormwater that was going to the NS that haven't been noted in the follow-ups from the previous regional council meeting. So, I mean, I know they're going to ENS, but I thought would have thought it would have been appropriate to say such and such a report will be <coughs> going to the ENS. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be going to the Environment and Services yeah. Committee meeting on the 12th of July, so yeah, point noted, but the, they're... Um yeah, I just thought, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't overlook the fact that we've asked, the, um, asked for those reports to go okay. to ENS. Yeah. Okay. Any other changes? Do we have someone to move the minutes are correct? Paul, will you do that? Yep. Seconder? All those in favour? Are there any matters arising from those minutes that aren't on the agenda? Peter? Uh, gee, I raised the question last month in relation to the um, fixing of the common seal, I think it was, um, the amount of <coughs> sales of leasehold land to date, the value of those sales in total, and um, the distribution of the funds therefrom. Um, Paul, did you follow up with that? Yeah, Jane, <coughs> James did mention it to me, Council. Um, from recollection, it's in the order of uh, 20 million uh, total um, total leasehold land. All the, the receipts from leasehold land sales is in the order of 20 million. And the uh, total value of the portfolio, I think, is 45, still 45 million. The total remaining value, or the total the original value? Total original value was 45 million. It fluctuates. Yeah, so it's about getting on for half sold. Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, can you just remind me, what do, what did we sell the forward rents for? Uh, 37. 37. For memory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just to follow up on that, I, I just wonder if it would be quite nice to have a, yeah. 
a breakdown of how many have sold, how many cross lease sections have sold because they're the sticky ones. Yeah, simple one page. And, and the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be useful. Okay, then we'll move to the um, minutes of the meeting of 12th of June. Basically, the um, submissions. Um, is there any corrections to those minutes? If there's not, can I have a mover, please? All you want. Councillor Curtin, Councillor Wilson, second. All those in favour, those <coughs> minutes are correct. Aye. Aye. Against. It's carried. Are there any um, thing, is there anything in those minutes that people want to put that's not on the agenda that you want on the agenda? It was pulled through yesterday. Oh no, that's uh, wait, wait, we'll. That's, oh, sorry, this matter's arising. Sweet. I'll, I'll come to you. Don't worry. Okay, thank you very much. There are no matters. So, just follow up from the previous regional council meeting then. Liz, will you take us through those? I will. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes. Um, items 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6, I think, are um, <coughs> self-explanatory. The one I wanted to just briefly address was item 5, where the status comment is still blank. Um, and there was a request that um, uh, the Council have a tutorial, for want of another word, around this swimmability concept that uh, the Government is seeking. Um, at our executive meeting on, on Monday, we noted that there's a regional council workshop scheduled for the 19th of July, so it'll be in all your calendars, and we were considering having, um, potentially having a, a field trip on that day. Councillor Bevan shaking his head. Field trip, yes. Yeah. So we're considering having a field trip on that day and potentially um, including a discussion around swimmability as part of that day. Okay, so, so that's... <laughs> or could be by the side of a ni side of a nice cold river. <laughs> um, um, so, so we, so we ha <coughs> haven't lost sight of that, and just trying to find a suitable time for that. Definitely, I um, might be here. <laughs> just to um, update you, that we, there was a discussion this morning about field trip, and the councillors do want to do that field yes. trip to yes. Central Hawke's yep. Bay. Yep. So we thought it may be if there's an opportunity that day to, to um, have a brief presentation from Mary Ann on swimmability, we'll take that opportunity. If not, it hasn't been forgotten, and we'll just schedule another time. Um, but are there any other questions, really, on on the rest of it? Um, if there are no other questions, I'd like um, Neil if you could comment on the capital review. That might be an opportunity to do that. Sure. Uh, the, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> and I do. I do want to. Uh, I think it's important that. Uh, Council is updated uh, on the capital review process uh, and even more so following the first initial meeting of it of the uh, of the panel uh, where it became very obvious that um, the, the this was the first opportunity for uh, our critical partners in our capital capital structure that is the port uh, and with HBRIC uh, and Council as the as the shareholder uh, coming together and the value of that being um, uh, being very apparent from very early on in that, that in that meeting uh, there is substantial pressure um, result, resulting from the deliberations of the panel and that is around the long-term plan and the tight of time frame for um, the work of that panel coming back to council to if you like inform the long-term plan and that um, uh, compressed time frame is now between now uh, and the end of September, probably October in reality. Uh, so um, what I think is important is that all councillors are brought up to speed much earlier uh, than was anticipated through the work program of the uh, Corporate Strategic Committee. In other words, waiting for those um, uh, reports to come through that that um, that process is is probably not going to be as a, um, uh, sufficient for uh, for council. So, um, in discussions with the chief executive, uh, he will come back to council with uh, a proposal to outline the activities of the of the committee of the panel and a process to uh, agree with councillors as to how they wish to be updated on progress. So. Uh, 
we'll await the Chief Executive's report on that. <coughs> Thank you, Neil. There are no other, <coughs> no other issues there. Um, let's go to those Lagoima. Anyone got any comment on those Lagoima? There's some pretty heady uh, Lagoima question there. Otherwise, um, we will move to um, get a mover to accept the follow-up paper. General move. Paul will second. All those in favour of accepting their follow-ups, including the Lagoimas. Well, it's moved. Passed. Court number five. Minor items not on the agenda. Mr. Mohi, you have one. Waipatu. Wilfrey. Paul. Uh, the um, meeting with Navy City Council about sewage discharge into the Ahavuri. Update on that. And um, pollution hotline. Oh, that's a goodie. I want to talk about Roy's Hill dump and um, I'll report on the Māori Committee at Opatama. Any other minor items? Okay, we'll move to decision item number six, the adoption of the annual plan. Right Liz, you're going to give us five minutes. Mr Chairman, I would never dream of spoiling Paul's last council meeting. It's all his. <laughs> oh, it's Paul's. Yeah, Mr Chairman, you had her going there for a while. <laughs> well oh, done. Okay. Well done. <laughs> OK, Mr Chairman, this is um, the um, adoption of the annual plan, uh, which is required by the Local Government Act to be done by the 30th of June. Um, this document that you have in front of you, which is rather, rather long, um, does reflect uh, all the adjustments made by council uh, from the meetings on the 12th and the 21st, where you consider 137 written submissions and 30 uh, submitters fronted up and, and presented their views. So the plan you have today um, purportedly reflects all those. Um, also, the carry forwards for the internal submission and other items in the internal submission are in the in the numbers now. And uh, also, no change to the plan as far as the um, the revision in rates. Um, the rate increase in, in the annual plan is indeed what was in the draft annual plan and is 9.88 per cent um, increase from the previous year. <coughs> the next uh, page, councillors, indicate that the uh, after the carry forwards uh, from 16-17, uh, the uh, current financial year or the old financial year come, comes across, um, we go from a deficit in the draft annual plan of I'm sorry, a surplus of the draft annual plan of 10,000 to a revised uh, deficit and the 1718 uh, revised annual plan will show a deficit of 418,000. Now that increase in deficit is offset by a reduction of the same amount in the 1617 year, so that's where the funding comes from. Okay. There's also um, the, some carry forwards on capital uh, there as well. Um, now. The, the attachments to, uh, you've got a big um, wad of attachments, uh, there's about half of that is the annual plan and it's divided into three parts. Part one is the introduction which is not too long. Um, part two is your activities and performance targets uh, and you'll note there um, any changes there are, in, are um, indicated in red so it's really very clear about what uh, the changes are from the draft for um, councillors to have a look at and perhaps comment on. Uh, financial information has been updated to reflect those uh, meetings on the 12th and the 21st. Um, I would just point out that the uh, numbers in the annual plan um, were um, finalised before the um, uh, the discussions uh, with HBRIC on the SOI were finalised. Um, so the annual plan is predicated on uh, uh, advances for the Rotana for starting in 2018, uh, uh, January 18. Um, this um, uh, this doesn't seem to be the case any longer. It'll be it'll be later. 
Um, so there needs to be a revision in dividends uh, down from uh, the higher figure, which was going to reflect advances to uh, on the return from January, um, and a figure that will go in here if, if indeed the SOI is adopted later on. Uh, will be a dividend of 10 million, and of course, because we have those funds on deposit, longer than interest will go up, so it'll, it'll compensate. So that um, that adjustment's yet to to be done. The um, funding for the Rua Tanifa will remain in the budget, but it'll be assumed that, if any, it'll be uh, picked up much later in the year. And it does give council the flexibility that, if indeed they did need uh, the money for the Ruatana, for it is in the annual plan, and there can be discussions about the rate of drawdown and um, and the impact on the budget at that time. So that tidies that up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have to. Um, and and the recommendations are fairly comprehensive, and they cover cover all that. <coughs> uh, <coughs> thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the last meeting there was some discussion about the contingency account and I meant to bring it up again during the meeting but I wasn't, my brain wasn't functioning terribly well. Um, I understand from Manton that it's confirmed as being um, at 50,000 for the year. That's correct. Un uncommitted. Uh, I would like to propose that it goes to 100,000 which I believe is a minimum a minimum level to provide for what may be around the corner that we don't know about today, but un undoubtedly will come up during during the year. Oh, um, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, if um, if it's resolved that the uh, contingency is moves from 50 to 100 thousand, then the deficit will move from 418 to 468, unless we determine the savings should be made somewhere, which sitting here, I wouldn't know where, but I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the consequences are that does it have any impact on rates? Yeah, no, <coughs> Councillor Curtin points out a good point. I mean, there are options, aren't there? Yeah. If an extra fifty go, uh, thousand go, <coughs> goes in, you always have the same options. It drops to the bottom line. Does it impact on rates or a decrease in costs? Just um, <coughs> along a similar vein, the, the net effect of not carrying forward a hundred thousand for the farm environment management plans. What what is that? That's been factored in here, obviously. Well, <coughs> as I was explaining to the chief executive when he thought that might have been a solution, um, the uh, reforecasting for the uh, sixteen seventeen. Uh, annual plan um, had a deterioration of 134,000, um, which we were saying could be looked at by council during the carry forwards if, if you did want to cover it. So to the extent that there was 100,000 on offer there, we've swung that purportedly back into balance. Wow. Mm. I think we need to deal with this um, issue. Uh, the council <coughs> support I mean, is it really just moving money around at this point, Alan? Because you've got a deficit. If you had a, if you had a. My experience is it's prudent to have a contingency sum, um, and if you don't have one that's at a realistic level, then and something comes up, you get caught out, then you've got problems. Uh, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be spent at all, but the probability is that there will be something during the year that, that will require yeah, just it. increase the deficit of your bottom line, you're happy with that? I can just increase the deficit, it's, it's manageable isn't it Paul? Well I mean it's not, uh, it couldn't be said to be material. No. Well Mr Chair I'm happy to see, if Councillor Dick wants to move a resolution to that direction, I'm happy to second that. I'll move, thank you. Okay, are people in favour of that? No. Uh, all those in favour? Yeah, right. I'm in favour as well. <coughs> then it's moved that we do that and increase our deficit by another 50 grand. Get to the line, hopefully. Uh, now, um, we might come to you, David. Did you have a. Thanks, a question for Gans. Then Neil, then you, Peter. Um, on page 33 and um, 
actively engage stakeholders, industry and the community in the Toki catchment and implementation of Plan Change 6, but I don't see any actions, required actions that relate to that at all. Does that matter or not? Page. 33. So if you go to oh, the yeah. third column in and the second red paragraph. Uh, Councillor, is this the agenda item, page 33, or...? No, the agenda is the agenda. Yeah, okay. It's from the agenda. Page 33 of it. Mm-hmm. That one there. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the, it's the second one, that Yeah. Yeah. Register. No, 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 page 33. Yeah, no, she said it's page oh. 33 of the There's annual... There's page 33 there. Yeah, no, but I asked her whether it was a little report or... So it's this one here, and it's really covered we, by we, that we, one. We did have a one. Graham, have you thought about getting wedding glasses? Yeah, I've got them here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually remember, I actually remember them this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well I'll done. tell you a story well, that day that reminds me Everything of. comes to light. Everything gets smaller. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think E. Maxwell's going to get back to me. I, the reason I asked was it was relating to the $100,000 that Fenton okay, right um, now, alluded to, so I couldn't see the actions. I was wondering if that was the reason why there were no actions. You're happy with the answer? I haven't got the answer yet. No, you're it's happy with the process. Yeah. Yep. We'll get an answer. Neil, and then back you, Peter. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And uh, Paul, if I can <coughs> trouble you um, on the capital spending that I'm seeing, I think it's <coughs> probably a collective issue. I don't think that we've really ad addressed this in our previous deliberations, so I wonder whether you could help me try and understand where, where things are happening. So I'm, 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 I'm referencing... Um, Recommend, recommendation 3.1 on page 13 of the of the paper. You with me there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, right. And you've got council loans, etc. And some of the more obvious ones are the heat insulation, solar water, etc. And then we've got public good capital assets, systems integration, etc. Hydrology. And then I've gone into uh, the body of the annual plan, and I'm at page 80 of the plan is page 7, at the very bottom of the page is page 80. It's the um, financial information external debt and interest expense page, um, note 4A. Yep. And then it's, um, it's, it's follow on as note 4B which is page 82. Um, so I'm just wondering whether, uh, am, I, am I in the right place in regard to 3.1 around uh, heat smart advances, solar water, new, the m new borrowings at the top of the page? Yes, yes you um, are. So yep. what, what that's telling me is that the uh, annual plan in year three, uh, in year two, 2016-17 current year, uh, was $2 million um, borrowed, is that correct? Yep. yep. And um, I'm assuming the actual is, is close to that. Um, yeah, we drew we draw down what's in that. Sure. Thing. And then what you're saying is in 2017-18 is a three million dollar drawdown. That's the LTP. LTP. Yeah, it's now and, uh, it's now revised to seven. Two, yeah. Revised. Um, so walking our way down there, can you help me with the public good capital asset loans? Um, yep. Well, 920 we, is uh, we've annual got, plan. We've um, got Manton Collins with us. Would you like to come up, Manton? You're the one that's all over these. Sheets. Sorry, this is on this is on page 80 of the annual plan. It's got page seven in the margin, but then at the very bottom, it's page. Yeah, eight. public good asset loans. It's a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. Is that what you? Yep. Council. Yep. Um, that would be to do with. 
So in the current year, 920, uh, was that actually spent? Um, we'll get Manda to pull it out. It, it's, it's to do with the um, grants to... Um, so Waitangi and... Can you use the um, Waitangi Regional Park is part of that and the Tamata Park um, first um, part of their allocation that we had from previous previous years. Um, I could get a split for you if you need. And sitting under that as well, Manton, is the 11.5 mil um, investment project and I'm assuming that's Rua Tanifa. Yes, so that was our um, estimate last year of what would need instead of selling our Wellington properties, we were going to borrow in the interim um, because of good returns. Obviously we haven't needed that, so we haven't borrowed it. And we have revised that in the year that you're looking at now to 6.5. Um, so 11.5 didn't happen. Didn't happen. And the 6.5 is forecast. Yes, and again would only happen if the RWS went ahead and we decided to keep the Wellington leasehold property for a little bit longer. So Paul, that was the provision you said for the dam was was actually in in, in, this, in this coming year's plan. Is that <coughs> the, the provision for the drawdown of the, of the dam is in the in the plan, and I'm yeah. proposing it remains. And I'll have you there. Uh, and so the next page was the at um, uh, 4B on page 82 at the very bottom. Your hydrology equipment, uh, because that's referenced again at 3.1 uh, in the in the paper, um, systems integration, hydrology uh, and investment assets. Um, can you help me there with those items? It's 100, 570, 100, that's all spent, I take it? Are you still on 4A, Councillor? No, 4B. Four, you're on 4B now, you moved to 4B. 4B is interest debt and interest expense. You, loan requirements, new borrowing at the top. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Um, that's your internal borrowing, isn't it? Yeah, I can answer that if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, sure. um, yes, yeah, so that's our internal borrowings where we can use some of our reserves as policy instead of external for a better interest rate. Um, the hydrology definitely been drawn down. That was um, some dr a drilling program. And the 570 is the new ticketing system for the buses, which, um, if you recall, through the submissions, has been revised down to a much lower um, cost than that. Um, I think it was 280 from the top of my head. Um, so that's... And the other one was the Tongoyo easement, which again went through carry forwards that to next year. Yeah. That helps me a great deal, Mr Chair. Yeah, yeah. me too. Peter, sorry. Uh, so, a, a couple of things. Um, page 12 of the attachments document. Um, the, the bottom paragraph on the right hand side it says, in this plan, council proposes to borrow for 11.2 million in the 216 17 year. I think that should be 17 18 year. If you go to page 30, um, I, Graham, I think this is for you, um, which is dealing with the um, re-nourishment program at West Shore. It's got the 1986 line was extent of erosion before beach narrowing began and is identified as a series of posts. Well, we were told during submissions that series of posts is no longer there. So what I suggest you do is on the right hand side where it says regularly monitor and report, I suggest that you change regularly to establish monitor and report because that's what you need to do. Um, I think it has some relevant, uh, relevance in, in sections of the coastal... Um, Microphone please. <coughs> Has some relevance in sections of the West Shore. I understand the northern section still is identified by post, so yeah, but, but I'll pick up the thrust. Part of it's it. not and needs to be yeah. re established yet. And, and I think the challenge is in the southern area that yeah. the line is actually 
some distance it's from the 1986, so it actually yeah. if you disappeared. Ma- if you imagine it yeah, sits in the air, so, so we need to we, we maybe pre- it needs pre- to be pre- re-established rather yeah. than established. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, and and the other one was on um, page 71 of the attachment, um, which is dealing with services to HPRI, and it's got here that um, HPRC will will uh, be supporting administrative by supplying administrative and financial services. I don't think that's any longer correct. hbrick has got its own <coughs> independent um, contractors now. So that's <coughs> that's entirely incorrect that pop those boxes there. And they need to be changed. Um, yeah, I think you're I think you're right there. It has been a moving feast that we still do a little bit of accounting but we're transferring that over as well and you're right the, um, so the board if those boxes could properly yeah. reflect what actually happens please yeah that's um it doesn't re- reflect a level of activity uh, which is just about zero that was all <coughs> is there any other issues relating to to this Other, otherwise we will move oh, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Just, just going back to um, Councillor Hewitt's query, yeah, and, and now that I can read the uh, read read page 33, yeah. I think an answer to your <laughs> question, uh, Councillor, is is that the second, the third um, bullet down deals with the actively engaged stakeholders. So it talks about uh, uh, hosting uh, biannual pan sector meetings, but at least five targeted good practice meetings with the uh, with okay. landowners. So I think that's the response to the. Work. Uh, engaging with the communities and those various <coughs> entities um, described as you know ongoing pan sector meetings and the five good practice capacity building meetings with landowners um, Well, it's, uh, and, and again, this is is trans, has transferred to Ian Maxwell, so it will be a you know, challenge for him as to what the uh, sort of the, the work program through is through the early part of this year, which is obviously uh, um, you know, a significant focus on the on the fence process. So I can raise that with him, but it was the target that was put in there associated with you know, the numbers we had and the numbers that were in front of us. But sorry, in, in response to your first query, it's it's the that's the response um, as opposed to it missing completely. It's, it's from your question is whether it's adequate. Raises so. some concerns. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's time to raise your concerns. Are you happy that we move this? My concern, I think, has been signalled to management, so perhaps okay. we pass it on to James. Do we have a mover then for all? One, two, six, I think it is. Happy to move, Mr. Chair. We have a seconder. Alan, do you wish to, to speak? Yeah, yeah I think, I think um, an annual plan demands that we have some commentary, Mr Chair, so happy to, um, to move uh, the adoption uh, of recommendations one to six and they encapsulate um, a, you know, a, a substantial um, consideration by all councillors over probably a six month period since, since, um, since the start of the new term and they, um, the, the annual plan and its impacts um, reflect uh, a, a great deal more urgency that has been picked up from the community and the demand for action, particularly in our um, hotspot or environmental um, problem areas. So um, this, this plan goes a significant way to at least initiate uh, urgent action um, in those areas and I'm delighted to see that, that at least we're making those moves. The other significant part of the plan Mr Chair um, and must be stated is that uh, the Rua Tanifa Dam as an instrument of council, uh, the prospect of it still remains uh, in the plan um, and I think we've got a good way forward uh, to um, come to a conclusion on it. Uh, and I'm delighted to see that we're going through that uh, that exercise. But I think it carries with it um, uh, the whole notion behind, particularly the direction of the plan, of the of the Ruatana for uh, plan, a scheme, if you like. It's 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 still with us, uh, and it is very much um, ought to be seen as a, if you like, a bridgehead to a, to a radically changed and altered landscape in terms of 
our land management functions. And I think we've, we're, we're starting to put those pieces of the puzzle together. So Mr Chair, um, uh, very pleased to see the progress made, uh, the, 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 if you like, the urgency with which this, this plan addresses the environmental issues and the opportunity to go forward, particularly into a long-term plan, uh, to really change the, uh, in the environment that this council works in, uh, in aid of the, uh, of the environment which um, ought to be and is uh, our primary consideration. Thank you, Neil. Alan. Any other speakers? Paul? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with Councillor Curtin that uh, I think an annual plan deserves some sort of comment, um, especially for someone like myself. It's the first time I've been through this process sitting around the table and I found it absolutely fascinating. Um, I think the um, staff have been really helpful in answering the question, any questions that we've had or I've had um, around the annual plan, so thank you for that. Um, and also the, the, le the level of um, quality of the debate between councillors has been, I think, I've, it's been really helpful for me. Um, to guide me through the process because coming in, coming in new it is really confusing as to how it all operates and, um, and I think I've um, like I say been guided through that um, most helpfully by, by staff and, and fellow councillors um, but I think it's really important that this particular annual plan really signals to the, to the community and to um, a number of parties who, who we're also involved with that there is a change of direction and, and uh, philosophy around, the, around this table and, uh, and that we're moving forward um, in a far more positive manner. Thank you, Paul. Any other speakers? Debbie? Thank you. My concerns around the annual plan have been um, well heard and well documented, so I don't need to reiterate them. But I'd just like to acknowledge, Paul, your last annual plan and um, without PowerPoints, so <laughs> just for me. Um, thank you, Paul, to you and, and Mant and the team and all the staff who've put considerable effort into this. Um, I know it's, it is a box ticking exercise, but a lot of work has gone into it and I appreciate and, and acknowledge that, so thank you. Any other speakers? Neil, do you wish to write a reply? No, that's fine. So we have a mover and a seconder. All those in favour of accepting all these recommendations in regard to the annual plan? Aye. Against is carried. Thank you very much to the team. You have done it's an incredibly big job you do. Well done. So we would like to dead on time, Chris, you know, are you impressed with that? Five minutes early. Chris and Sam. Um, you're on. The uh, we'll go directly to H Brick's report. Um, and I'm conscious um, Sam has to get away to a board meeting, so A very impressive bit of greenstone you've got there, Sam. Is that from out of the archives of your family? Was it? Ah, it's very nice. Okay, um, Chris, uh, who are we handing the floor to here? Chairman, I apologise that I should have found this basic fact out before I sat here. I think this is the fourth. SOI that we've presented to the council, if it's the fifth, but it's been like a lifetime really. Um, but but uh, I, I, um, I, I've, I've been the interim chair for six months um, and Chris takes over on Monday next week uh, after the 30th of June. And so um, really I, I've just been a custodian. Um, it's, been a, it's been a checkered history with this poor old um, age brick. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff. Um, but we'd have to be quite honest and say that the comms with our shareholder haven't been quite as flashy as they could have been at times. Um, but we have endeavoured to improve that and I would hope that councillors will reflect that they have improved in the last six months and I'm sure with Chris's leadership they will certainly improve into the future. Um, Chris's, uh, so this, 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 this presentation here is um, just a, a normally quarterly shareholders report but it is, does include the SOI, the Statement of Intent, which sets out the sets out the expectations of of you as shareholder for us over the next 12 months and the and the two two out years, um, and 
and so, so that's, this is a slightly more full version that we're going to run through today uh, in our presentation. But Chris has prepared most of the work um, and uh, he'll, he'll probably c carry on most of the conversation but it will be a bit of a punch and Judy show. Thanks, Dan. Um, so, Chairman, we, we, there has been a bit of activity. Uh, the board's uh, come and gone a little bit, but mostly, you know, more people have joined. So, over the last six months, we've had uh, five new directors, two councillors who are sworn in or who joined the board early in January, and then three new independent directors who are appointed after a selection process. And they are induct first induction was in May. So, we've a fair bit of time inducting these new, these new directors to the uh, vagaries of a CCO and all the responsibilities and that go with that. Um, We've, we've, we've interacted with the port considerably. Um, we've, one of the bigger items that we've, that's gone on the last six months has been the, the Rotanifa, um, re review um, and all the negotiation and, and coming to, to a conclusion on the conditions precedence. Uh, part of that process is that we, and I was away, but Chris uh, led, the, led the, the, if you like, delegation into Central Hawke's Bay. Three meetings held with uh, farmers to encourage them to roll their water contracts. That's work in progress as we speak. Uh, I, I, I can say that they won't, they, won't, they won't be fully completed by the 30th of June when those contracts expire. A lot of verbal uh, encouragement and acceptance, but the paperwork hasn't done, and we expect that a lot of that will be tied up in the first month of the new calendar year being June. Chris um, has, you know, doesn't let the grass grow under his feet, so he's been doing, making his own uh, uh, inductions, and he'll report on the next couple. Yes, yeah, so as, as part of um, coming on board as the new chair, and I accept I'm not in that role until 1st of July, but I thought I'd try and hit the ground uh, running. So a part of um, that lead-in, we've had initial meetings with um, Minister of Economic Development and also with Crown Irrigation Investments just to bring them up to speed with the new CPs and the amended CPs that have uh, been put, put in front of us. Uh, also, uh, we intend to meet with the um, Funding Minister, uh, Minister Guy and Minister Joyce in, in coming months as well. And in addition, and as part of that comms strategy or just in getting better communications so that we're you know, largely on the same page, um, I've tried to have individual meetings with councillors, as many councillors as possible, just to talk through where everyone's at and, and um, I think that's been helpful. Um, oh, sorry, get the right. Uh, in terms of continuing with the shareholder report, we've obviously had a um, couple of board meetings since the new uh, uh, directors have been on board and with a focus on the SOI so that's meant that uh, myself, Tane and Dan have had to come up to speed uh, pretty quickly. That has included um, the half year results um, from the port and we did want to talk just briefly about some of the challenges um, that face the port over the next two to five year period uh, and, and also offer councillors the opportunity for a more substantive briefing with the port uh, if you would like to do that uh, at, a, at a time to be agreed because we think that as we go hand in hand with the, the capital review Rex that, that you're leading that actually having councillors across some of the issues as well will make the, um, the decision making ultimately a lot, 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 lot better. I think if people understand exactly the issues that are faced then uh, it makes the decision making much more simpler. So you know, look there's no doubt there is a, ma a massively changing uh, landscape uh, within the port sector. Uh, you only have to look at the price of a container up to Europe now, which is about a third of the cost of what it was some five to six years ago. That's resulted in massive losses across the shipping industry and some a lot of um, acquisition and merger activity going on. So there's significant uh, uh, mergers of shippers and also container businesses across the world going on as we speak. That is resulting in larger and larger ships entering the New Zealand shipping system and therefore the need for us to, uh, for the port to consider a significantly larger new wharf uh, in Wharf 6, which has a, a price tag of circa 100 million. One would hope that uh, that contains some growth along with that, but actually uh, indications are that in the, in the short term that actually is a, just to stay relevant with business as usual. So there could be significant cash flow requirements from the port to, keep, to, to stay relevant which is an interesting, interesting challenge that we uh, need to face. 
Um, there's no doubt that there's been short-term growth there with uh, the Kai, following the Kaikoura earthquake. Uh, that's been uh, good. How sustainable that growth is into the future uh, is interesting, but also um, but it has resulted in a range of land purchases, uh, again, which have put some cash flow uh, requirements on the port. So they've purchased land in Pandora and in Whakatū with the aim of developing inland hubs uh, to cope with some of the changed business format. Just to give you an in indication of that, when they got some of the uh, Wellington business, that tended to come in in lots of two containers for smaller businesses. So what happens is if you've previously stacked containers in a, in a stack of 20, four high and five deep, and a, ship, and a truck turns up and wants the container at the uh, second from the bottom at the back, it requires, it requires a whole lot of movement so, uh, of containers to do that. So they've been just thinking them through the way they handle that, moving containers off site for that kind of business, stacking them in smaller stacks and allowing quicker access to them. So all these sorts of issues are, you know, uh, become pretty important. So, uh, and, it, and on top of that, that short-term growth has meant that some of the requirement for investment and just carrying equipment uh, has come forward as well. So it's been interesting. But yes, like, like you say, um, we're off, off, offering a, a briefing as we go through the capital review to, to make sure that councillors are across some of those wider issues. And also um, just wanted to report that that capital planning process which Rex is, is leading uh, kicked off last Friday so that um, resulted in a, in a work program that we'll work through that will align very closely with your long term planning process and, and feed into the decision making or help feed into the decision making that you'll have to make uh, as a council in that long term process. Uh, and obviously a key part of our um, work, work program over the last few months has been the statement of intent which we'll discuss with you today. Uh, just briefly, I mean, I've put the, the accounts are there before you. We'll just table them um, as as uh, as tabled. I mean, this is just shows the um, the performance of Hbrook over the last last no income in April. Some costs of thirty three thousand in April. Cost year to date of, of five seventeen. Uh, interestingly, that if you compare that against last year, uh, cost of two fifty one. The actual there's five what's the what's the value? There's five hundred thirty thousand dollars worth of Hawke's Bay Regional Council costs that were in there last year but then capitalised into the scheme. So over the costs of Andrew and other um, team members of the of wider team members. So overall uh, Blair has indicated to me that we're about three hundred thousand under the cost of running H Brick over last year. But clearly it was a different it was a different <coughs> period of time and it's very difficult to measure like with like. But those, those, those expenses were not only regional council expenses, they're external consultants, just, just the general development of the AWS in the, in the doing phase. Now we've gone to the moratorium phase, we've just paired that because as Chris said, there's a saving or reduction of 300,000 on a like-for-like -like basis this year. Been saying that, that, I mean, what I'd like to do is encourage in our quarterly reports, good, you know, especially when our, when our CE is here, good question of our accounts. If you've got anything that, um, that you'd like to ask, uh, me or us about them, we'll endeavour to answer them here for you and if not, if I can't answer them, to go away and get the answers, okay? Yeah, I'm happy to take questions. Well, it's, I think it's easier to take questions as one goes because then otherwise you, won't, you tend... Uh, no, I said circa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of numbers thrown around. So I think I think we need to be very careful about. Um, I've heard 100, 100, and it's excluding gantry cranes, which come as, as a second tier. Yeah, yeah. So I think. Uh, Microphone chair. Oh, sorry. Couldn't you hear me, Pen? No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's more important. Um, so um, uh, clearly we're relying on the expertise of, the, uh, of those directors who are port experts Correct. to tell us, to get, to get us that figure. Um, that's not our job, but to get us that figure. When are they going to be able to do that? And so, that to, so, you know, you've got the big ships, how are they going to handle that, all of those bits and pieces um, that they've got to knit together through their expertise yeah. and they're going to come up with a number. Uh, well, I think um, we've asked as part of the work program for the capital review for each of our organisations to go away and uh, prepare long 15-year 
P and Ls, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be with that. If they're intending uh, mm. us to finance or look to the means of financing, it will have to be within that that period. So I, I would I would anticipate that once they put a number in that that process, that's the one we would be. Absolutely right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and um, you know, it, it is a the capital review is about a holistic um, process. So. That, uh, we don't want them to think they're going to do this on their own. There's a holistic process that we're looking at all of our capital. Yeah. Uh, they just got to come up with a number, and then we we collectively resolve how we're going to fund. Yeah, we look the at number. the different solutions. There's a range of different solutions right. from okay. uh, so increasing debt, that. equities, yeah. options you know, that we would then arrive at to how we might. Um, you know, but I think first and foremost, you've got to start, ask, ask the question: Do we want our port to remain relevant? <laughs> do we want it to be a key economic driver? I think we'll all, I think we'll I think get, we're to, that, through we'll that get to that question pretty good, answer yeah. pretty quickly. Uh, yes, we do. Um, so then it's how do we uh, deliver? Yeah. And we are relying on their expertise because we don't have that, you know, that oh. expertise. Those are port experts and we want it. So we've answered that question really, get on with it. Um, what's the number? That, and and that, as you pointed out, it's the 15 year vision. Actually, I would have thought it's actually more like a 30 year vision. Um, the number has to meet the mm. vision to take us out 30 years. Yeah, but my sense is from what they've been telling us, they see that the port is, is more in the, the five to six year, <laughs> so I think you'll see it in the earlier pictures, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay, um, so just moving on to the statement of intent, and I, uh, what I thought I'd do is just kind of, for the benefit of taking a minute of your time, just remind remind everyone what the vision uh, was. It's, well, it wasn't the vision that I came up with, but it's the vision that sits in the statement of intent. And I think it, it goes to the heart of what we're, you know, we're in this thing together, uh, and actually it's about achieving a, you know, a win-win outcome. That's what HBRIC's there for. And it is to optimise the financial and strategic returns to Council from its allocated investment portfolio to assist Council achieve its vision of a region with firstly a vibrant community, a prosperous economy, importantly a clean and healthy environment and for, for now and for future um, generations. So I think that's, that's at the heart of what we're there to do. Okay. Um, our key objectives are the growth of shareholder value and I just wanted to touch on this um, for benefit of councillors. Shareholder value can come in a number of ways. It can be don't think of the growth as just always growing dividends, which it can do. But also, if it grows the value of the asset, that is another strategic objective. But sometimes if you want to free up that growth in value and want to use it for other things, say, within the council, then that does require you to liquidate a portion of the asset. So if, suddenly, if, if for example, you've got an asset that is worth $250 million and we're able to grow it to where you're worth $350 million, and you've got some significant projects, environmental projects, that you want to be able to you know, fund and give cash flow to, then you might not be able to get it out of di in dividends, but you may be able to get significant cash out because you've increased the value of your balance sheet. But that requires a different strategy. Okay? So I just wanted to... Um, to so anyway, there's two, three objectives within our SOI, is to grow the growth of shareholder value, which is the value of our balance sheet, increased financial and strategic returns, and also to ensure that our investments are secure and sustainable over the long term. Uh, in terms of the Napier port, uh, I've discussed some of those things, but um, in our SIOI you'll see some key key statements about that. It is clearly a leading international port, it is clearly the leading international port in the central New Zealand. It's a continued source of non-rate revenue and will always be, uh, you know, at some level, a continued source of non-rate revenue. Uh, in the short to medium term, uh, there are investment challenges which will, will place, or could place pressure on dividend return, but once again it will depend how we approach those solutions. Uh, there is a need to evaluate the risks and benefits of con continuing to own 100% of the port as we go in the future, and once again that's part of that capital review. In terms of the Real for Water Scheme, it is a key means or, you know, of contributing towards the council's objective of restoring the Toki Toki catchment. That is one of the key rationale for kicking it off in the per first place, as well as being an economic driver. Uh, the council's previously approved an investment of, of uh, 80 million, subject to conditions precedent. There is now a new environmental condition precedent, which came in in May 2000 and 
17, and a new focus on the financial return from the scheme 4-H Brook. And I just wanted to put those down there to show that we had been listening <laughs> clearly and that we're looking to uh, deliver on that. I wanted to uh, give you an indication that we've threw it around the board table, and I think this is uh, important and has come from uh, the suggestions from councillors that we've uh, started a new work, pro new work program. It's a new River First uh, work program has been uh, commenced, uh, which Hbrook intends to present uh, to council in coming months to meet the amended environmental CP. This will require a budget for us to deliver upon that. So it is our intention to frame up how that piece of work will, will occur, how, how we will utilise all the existing work that has been done and brought together to uh, deliver that document. But clearly you've, got a new, you've provided us with a new C CP that we need to try and meet, and so we need to take a, a new approach to that. So uh, we intend to come back to you in, in future meetings to say, okay, this is how we, what we're proposing, and this is how we propose to pay for it or, or, or budget for it. So I just wanted to give you that heads up. Uh, and just in, finally, in, the, in terms of the Royal Tanafa, obviously the land exchange decision, uh, st we still await that from the Supreme Court. Um, we sometimes go over these um, tables quickly in the SOI, but once again, in terms of Rex, I had a quick phone call with Rex a couple of days ago in advance of this meeting. He said, just spend a little bit of time on the debt and income um, targets so that councillors understand those a little, a little better. So what I've tried to do is to endeavour um, to give you a bit of a heads up here. They, these, these tables are slightly different in the, in the SOI, but um, I've tried to make them a little more, more understandable. So just dealing with um, the first column, which is our current annual year, with, with shareholder funds of 239,000. Oh, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, 239 million, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There should, there should, be, you know, there should be a zero, zero, zero at the top of that. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, our, as a parent, HBRIC are able to raise debt of up to 10%. Our target is to be less than 10%, which would be uh, some 33 million. Currently, our debt in HBRIC is at 19.4, so it's uh, 14 million directly advanced from Hawke's Bay Regional Council and 5.4 million from the BNZ. So that 5.4 million was raised to repay the 6 million back to. Uh, the regional council, which happened in May. Okay, so the total debt in uh, there is at the moment that represents about 5.8% level. Okay, so in terms of the consolidated debt, that's the debt total debt between Hbrook and the port. Our target is to be less than 40% of uh, uh, of the assets and, and equity. Um, so that would allow us to go to, at this point in time, given the current shareholder funds of 239 million, <laughs> uh, go to uh, some 132 million in total debt. Currently we're at 99.1, which represents 79.7 on the port's balance sheet, and 19.4 HBRIC, which we talked about before. So at the moment, the total debt profile is some 29%. Okay. Councillors would probably like a copy of your report, including the preamble. Sure. So maybe we, we can easily provide that to circulate that. Now, uh, just um, one question. So that um, valuation of the port is on the new valuation that a couple of years ago. It's not the NTA, is it? Yes, it's, correct. It's yep. a valuation. It's on the valuation level. Yeah. yeah. So if you actually look look at the, um, as I understand, the balance sheet of H brick, it's mm -hmm. on the original value that it transferred across. There's a revaluation yeah. reserve in that balance sheet. And that valuation um, is that done updated annually? It's it's it's, re it's, re it's, re oh, sorry. it's reviewed by the directors annually, and it's formally done every three years, I think. Oh, okay. It's not but it's not formally done every three years. But review. But, the, but the, the directors will look at does this does this pass the smell test? Does it have you know comparators? Mm -hmm. Yes, it feels okay. okay. And and the directors. You know, at one stage you got quite close before the next formal valuation, but it's formally revalued every three years. Uh, I just that final note down the bottom there. We also have a target which we must have um, uh, interest cover, so earnings of at least three times uh, what we're committed to in terms of our debt profile. 
question. So um, to Paul, so um, the 60 mil, that's still on our balance sheet, isn't it? Yes. So that hasn't passed over to these guys. So that would change cash on hand, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it's... That would change that um, consolidated it would. debt figure quite. It would. It's actually 66, isn't it? Yeah, oh, 60, yeah. So 60 because we've paid back this year. That's right. Don't worry about six million months, mates. Uh, okay, well, really, technically, that should be with you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not not until the you know the, the project um, either proceeds or um, would that be um, transferred. We've got a few CPs to tick off, Chairman. Oh, yeah, I no, you, you could argue that, but there's, um, I'm sorry to be esoteric on you, but you could, uh, but from our, from my personal perspective, um, capital um, that's uh, is better in the hands of our investment company than in with the council. Well, that that that, so that is that is correct, and that could uh, because we get into these. So it's not to do with the dam. Yeah. No. Yeah, we get into the situation where there's an expectation from council of a six percent return on that. That um, that capital of sixty six million, uh, that uh, it is, while it still rests on the balance sheet of of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council in the in the bank earning three and a half, and all of a sudden your investment company's tasked with finding two two point five percent of return when we don't even have the cash on our balance sheet, which is kind of an interesting scenario. But that's very interesting. That's why we should give it to you because you're smarter and making oh. more money than us, yeah. Chairman. But I would also, uh, and seriously, in all seriousness, I think that's, that's very much the capital review. Uh, yeah, issue. yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it that, is, and that's 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 a great great concept. Yeah. 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 Any other questions on that debt? On that? Can I go back a step? Chris, probably to your previous slide and um, just to get a better, deeper understanding of um, River First, that one there, River First. Um, um, have you developed that notion at this stage? Is, is there some you know, positioning or documentation that goes with that concept? So we had some an initial briefing from our uh, environmental uh, legal expert, um, Stephen, Stephen Daish. So we had some provisional papers that were presented to the board that would give effect to what the River First strategy uh, and how we might shape that up, you, particularly using um, existing and then also but meeting the new requirement of providing uh, FEMPs in a, of a... Of a um, of an appropriate number to meet the expectations of, of council. So, uh, but it's at an early stage, and it's not at a stage that I think we could would be could share at this point. Just to follow up on that topic. Um, given the focus and opportunity around land management, uh, can I assume that under the banner River First, we've got a very substantial land management approach and environmental expectation is is that fair to say oh, it, it is fair and i think to extend on that it's, it's not we don't see this as just a, an h brick we see it as a partnership with the hawks bay regional council i mean there will be this is this is we cannot achieve on our own the the results that councillors and the community are expecting from the from that catchment so we see the the strategy the work the strategy has been very much a partnership where we will have a role to play and others will have roles to play as well. And finally, Mr. Chair, if I could indulge you for a moment, um, do you s is is it cat is it HBRIC's interim position or early position that this is a catchment wide approach as opposed to we're here just to deal with subscribers to the scheme? Can you tell us about your view or potential view on? what River First means for the catchment? Well, well councillors, councillors have defined that for us. That CP is quite clear that it's catchment. So if we're going to give effect and be successful with this scheme, we need to deliver on that. A great position to be, and I'm pleased to hear it. But Chris, do you think that's a realistic expectation? To well, that, take responsibility for... <coughs> Er significant areas that are out of your direct control? Well, it's going to be very difficult, Councillor, uh, but uh, that is the direction that we've been uh, requested to pursue. 
uh, and that is and, and, and frankly if if uh, we can't deliver a scheme that ultimately benefits the catchment from an, on a long-term basis I think there's some debate around the timing and whether within, within which a wider scheme can give net, net positive environmental gains to the catchment I mean some would want it to be in a few years time I, I'd argue that it is going to be over a, a significant period of time given the the time frame it's taken to get to the position we're in given the I guess the nutrient load that still exists within the in the farming systems that are there I think you know if anybody we have to take a long-term view of of change and of improvement you know providing we can get agreement that it is a long-term process then um, I don't, frankly I don't want to be involved with a, a scheme that's not going to deliver net positive gains for the environment over over a longer period of time yeah um, however if if you're taking on that responsibility because the council's asked you to um, <coughs> you couldn't take on that responsibility on your own could you oh no no because the regional council at the end of the day is going to have to be a very significant, if not the major player, in the areas that are, are beyond your direct control. And I think that's why the River First strategy is so important, is to define the roles. It may be that the HBRIC are responsible for uh, those that sit within the scheme and what we can, what levers we can pull and can't, but in terms of meet, meeting the other farms that are within the catchment, there are other, you know, it's the, it's the council that are responsible for those particular farms and so, you know, it, to me it's a partnership. But without wanting, oh, sorry, to, just to add another uh, point that hasn't been brought into this part of the conversation though, the, uh, the overriding uh, legal document is Plan Change 6 of course. That's, you know, that, that's, 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 that's the document that's on the table, that's the one that guides us and, and uh, along with what the shareholders have asked us, along with the CP, along with the investors, along with the ability of the farmers to pay. So all of this must, I th you know, that, that's another factor that we need to put into this mix, but as Chris says, this is not us working alone, this is us working in partnership with the council, with the investors, with the farmers and, uh, and anyone else that wants to come along and, and have a discussion on it. But I think plan change six is an issue that is a, is a, is a factor we do need to take account of as well. Oh, look, just to the absence um, of the chief executive here, I'm sure he'd um, want this covered off. Uh, so there is a, absolutely a specific work programme um, that's been developed um, within HBRC. And we've already had um, a few meetings uh, with um, yeah. St Stephen Daish, and just to map out, because the, the CP is quite unequivocal in the fact that it is broader than just HBRIC's mandate, um, and so, yeah, we're working um, closely to develop e exactly what the work program is under that, whose responsibilities uh, are whose under that work program. Just a, on the same vein, um, <coughs> a couple of new CPs have uh, been introduced, well, one modified, one introduced, and, and I'm very pleased to see the River First uh, and your explanation of that, Chris. Um, just my question though is, HBRIC now must be operating in its mind to a, 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 a threshold, if you like. So everything's on the table now. Is that, is that the intent, is that the, um, the message you're getting from the council or you know it would be terribly unhelpful now to start introducing new tweaks and twists and etc. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen but I just want to be clear that your expectation is we've got this threshold now once we meet these CPs if the um, court process goes in a certain direction and it is now on that it's on. Councillor with, with uh, that I think rests with with you, I mean, it, it rests with you. I mean, it, it does, we, we have now got a clear work program to go forward and to endeavour to meet what's been put in front of us, right? If you choose as a council to change that again, that is your prerogative. But uh, we then cannot be held for not having tried to achieve <coughs> what, what the targets you've set for us. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? Then I'll look for someone to move that we accept all these recommendations. Sorry, Mr. Jim, can I just ask about? Um, oh, oh, sorry. There's a couple oh, more slides. Just to you finish. haven't finished. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 oh. 
and I don't, I don't see these as recommendations. It's just a it's a it's a, re, it's a report. A report. Well, but but the we accept them as the uh, SOI uh, is, is the oh sorry is the operative yes, yeah, the SOI. Yeah. Um, just I just wanted to touch briefly on the earnings and the different expectations. Uh, just again to uh, talk councillors through particularly the, the first, the last year and this year in terms of uh, expectations from the port and then expectations to cover the advances made to uh, uh, HBRIC, some of which, as you're quite right, Chairman, still sit on the uh, Hawke's Bay Regional Council balance sheet to the tune of 66 million now, or previously 60 million. So in terms of the parent, which is HBRIC, expectation on the port, even though the port earns more than 3% return on shareholders' funds, our expectation in terms of a dividend stream has been at 3%, which has been the 7 million uh, level last year and the 7 million level this year, both of which have been met by the port. There has been an additional target set on HBRIC for the consolidated position, with it, which is a 6% return. Uh, so. Uh, that we've delivered, tr endeavoured to deliver that through the port and also through uh, um, uh, an additional special dividends to cover the 6% uh, the return expected by council on the, uh, well, the 60 million uh, level. So um, that's been covered by a $2.5 million dividend in uh, this year, which you'll see I can report, and I understand, Paul, you can. Perhaps, but yeah, I understand there's the, the final dividend will be paid into across from the port to HBRIC to council this week, okay, which will deliver for you, for you on this, this year's uh, annual plan. For next year, uh, the, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, well, initially a special dividend was requested of three. The port was unable to deliver it at that level. They, re they uh, said that we can only provide a special dividend of two million. So we've, um, as, a, as HBRIC, agreed to distributions of a total of 10 million, including 7 million uh, dividend from the port with a special dividend of two, and potentially a cash flow funding from HBRIC to meet that 10 of, of up to one. Okay? We better be clear on this because that's not the message I had. Um, are you saying that the 10 million, which I understood had been very, very diligently negotiated, is actually a million dollars of borrowing? It's a million dollars, the three million. It's a million dollars of distribution. Um, that's that, that's the position that's been 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 negotiated between the between the executive. Let, let's the, let's be clear: is 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 the port? The source of the million dollars, or is it not? So, so the, the the position from the port is that at their board level, they could commit to a seven million and a two million distribution based on the fa let, hear me through, please, on the basis of the current what's before them. That if the year uh, pans out well, they may they may be able to extend to a ten million dollar dividend, right? But in, we've had to underwrite the $1 million off our own balance sheet. That's not the message I got, Mr Chair. So if, if there is no um, another million dollars to come from the port, then clearly if you're underwriting it, that means it transfers across back to the Regional Council, then that would have to be done by borrowings, wouldn't it? That's correct. Okay, because that's the thing I think we need to make real. I, I, I'm really keen on making really clear to the public is that at the end of the day, um, the, uh, the special dividends have been have been borrowed by Hackbrook against. Can, can I add a little context to this? I think uh, the commencement of the capital review is very important in this space. Um, the the port directors are uh, looking at what is before them in terms of the cash flow that they're going to have to outlay for a range of investment options. They want to know exactly uh, the financial tools and solutions they will have before them in terms of debt, equity, arrangement, which will only be finalised by, um, uh, by the capital review. 
when they have comfort around that, I think they will be in a far more, uh, they'll be in a much better position to make the kinds of decisions about extending the dividend. They were not prepared to, at this point, move beyond the seven and two, but uh, so that's that's uh, uh, that's where it is. It is a timing issue. It is. Can I just put, can I just back Chris up on that, Chairman? Just just to reinforce the point is that the directors, we've had a lot of discussions with the directors of the Port of Napier, and the present circumstances with what they know, and particularly the, the, the requirement for building capital, building a balance sheet to be able to uh, finance this wharf and their associated infrastructure. As prudent directors, they've decided the best they can pay is seven plus a two of special, but. None of us know what's going to come out of this capital review committee. If that goes as, as some of us would speculate it might go, then they'll be able to find the income. But if the capital review is not able to offer them any support, then as directors of the company they've indicated that's what they can do. So I think it's a little bit of a circular argument with some unknowns, and I think Chris has explained it well, and I just want to reinforce that point, that the, this, this is, wasn't a decision taken lightly in, in response to Mr Curtin's a, a question. It, it was taken considered by the port, uh, we've had discussions with them and that's what they've come up with. Well, Mr Chair, we've, we, we, we've got a problem in that respect because uh, you know, I had a clear impression that, that we had negotiated, and I'd be interested in Mr Drury's comment uh, because he knows these things very well, um, that we were getting, uh, we'd negotiated the 10 million, uh, which was seven plus three from the port. Um, I'm seeing a different situation here that a promise of three but not necessarily being delivered. Um, Councillor, that's not actually accurate. Um, what we negotiated was um, to HBRIC, who are the people that we talked to, that um, they somehow make the 10 million work with our, and, and it had to be um, in a certain way because it had to be reflected as a um, dividend, not capital. Um, and they were either going to go back to the port or they were going to make it work with their, in their own machinations. I'm sorry if that wasn't relayed to you accurately. <coughs> but our, our discussion was with HBRIC, not the port. Well, could I have a comment from Mr Drury as to, as to precisely what has transacted here. I understood there'd been a, a negotiation and it had been resolved. No, I think Mr Tremaine has uh, covered it really well. Um, HBRIC have stepped up and taken responsibility to meet the team, which I, which I think is good. It's a good relationship. Um, he's also indicated that um, working with the port is a work in progress. Uh, they've come in with some numbers now, and I think um, I think they're hoping to do better. And work and work will be undertaken between HBRIC and the port um, to to fill that gap. And um, and I'm encouraged by his positive stance on on that. It's it's good moving forward. Happy, happy to move, chair. Are there any more questions? I move all the accepting four recommendations. recommendations. I, I, just a quick, just a quick question, uh, directors. Sam, uh, are you going to stay on as a director? Yes. Yes. I, I, my warrant runs out next year. Sorry, next my, year. Yeah, Jim and I retire next year. <coughs> okay. Um, and um, the, I should remember his name, but I can't. Um, chap from Nelson has he retired? David Faulkner has been Faulkner. off the board for probably 18 months. He, re he, re he remained on the on the AWSS committee for a while, oh, time but, he, but, he, but um, no, he's he's been off for certainly well over 12 months. Okay. And do you expect a reasonable con continuity from the rest of the board at this stage? Well, as Chris said, we've met twice as a new board, and um, it, I mean, you've got two councillors um, on the board. One's just disappeared, but Debbie's right beside you. I would rate it as a very good board and working very well, Chairman. That's good. Any other questions? We have a mover. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Dick, will you second? Sure. Any other? Do you want to comment? I oh, just very briefly, Chair. Um, I, I have confidence in the explanation around the dividend and the, um, the the variations, if you like, for the shortfall. And I have great confidence that HBRIC will negotiate that deal with some finality once. Um, 
the picture is better known at the port. Um, I, I just want to congratulate you, uh, Chris, on your you know pending taking the reins, and um, you've got a very good style and uh, you know explain things very well. So, and I think the River First initiative, first I've seen of it, looks pretty stunning. So, I, I wish you really guys does, wish you guys yeah. well, um, <laughs> in in you know between us pulling together some pretty good stuff. I know there's a lot of information there that probably just needs a bit of finessing. Um, my understanding of the FEMPS, even though we're only in the in the second second hundred or the from 100 to 200 somewhere in there, we've got a fairly big footprint of the catchment already under consideration. Um, you know, 40 to 50 percent. My understanding. I'm, I'm looking forward to some more reporting on that going forward. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you for a, a very clear and concise um, presentation. Alan. Oh. Um, uh, I'll just uh, simply like to say thanks to Sam for his uh, tenure as chairman. It's been very productive uh, through through some difficult times. And uh, <coughs> Chris, um, welcome and best wishes and thanks for your initiative in um, in making contact with councillors like, like myself. Appreciate that. Paul. Then yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to thank Sam and, and Chris, especially for your report today. I, th I think it, um, the River First program um, and your comments around, um, around your thoughts around not not wishing the RWSS to go ahead if it doesn't prove to be the environmental um, of environmental benefit like it claimed to be. I think I, f I find that really refreshing because um, I think that's been really honest, and I think that also reflects the direction that this council is, is looking at. So, thank you for that. As for the um, issue about the um, the capital, um, I understand and appreciate that it is a, an issue of timing. We've got a whole bunch of balls in there at the moment, and we're just trying to, to work our way through it. So um, I'm prepared to accept that um, there may or may not be a, a, an extra debt of a million dollars sitting on H Brooks box because we want to keep that um, that dividend coming through. So yeah, no, much appreciate. Neil. Well, thanks, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Chris and Sam. T totally appreciate, um, if you like, the, 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 the very substantive shift um, to the, and the River First program itself. I, th I think that's really, really important, and the acknowledgement that there needs to be an overarching catchment-based approach. And um, I'm not suggesting that. Um, <coughs> HBRIC is responsible for that at all, but what I am hearing from you is an acknowledgement that we do need an integrated um, um, process right across the board in partnership with Council, uh, and that HBRIC itself is a party to that and not some, if you like, uh, observer on the side, um, which I suspect had been its role for quite some time or seen itself um, as, as a very minor player in that approach. So. And I like the approach that you've adopted in terms of meeting the council's strategic objectives alongside its financial. Um, that to me is a, a very substantive shift. Um, I would comment and um, I am concerned about the million dollars, um, as you may have picked up. Um, I'm probably having sat around the table for not quite as long as Mr. Drury um, in, on council and aware of his uh, firmness in, in regard to discussions and negotiations with the port, uh, that there had, has and has always been a dance around the dividend. Um, my view is that the million dollars ought to be returned from the port. I'd hate to see HBRIC borrow a million dollars to underwrite our dividend, which then underwrites our, our rates. Um, and that, to me, would be a very negative or a backward step that we borrow for normal operation operating rate scenarios. So, um, uh, good luck getting the million dollars. You need to get the million dollars, and um, I'm a little bit. Um, I, I will be asking that question regularly when you come to see us. How well and how how much money have you got, Debbie? <coughs> Debbie. Thanks, Chair. Chris, um, thank you for um, stepping up, hitting the ground running and bringing the confidence to this councillor table that is, um, that is needed at this stage in the, 
on the journey. And, um, and Sam, I'd like to just pause with you. I know you're trying to get out the door, but I'd like to thank and acknowledge you for stepping up in the capacity as interim chair for the last six months. And it's been a really busy time. I know you have a hugely busy diary anyway, but on top of general um, chairman roles and activities, you've actually had to induct five new directors. So it's been no, no small task and um, you really have stepped up. So on behalf of the council and the region for what you have done um, in, this, in the short term anyway, and I know you're still around, I'd just like to say thank you. Peter. Uh, thanks, Gio. Really, just to endorse the thoughts of, um, of Councillor Wilson, um, I don't think the two organisations have been anywhere near as close as they've needed to be since I've been on this council. Uh, and I think the introduction of the new directors um, uh, and Sam's taking over of, of the chairman's role has helped a significant amount. And um, I do thank you, Sam, for filling that breach so ably. It's been really helpful. And Chris, I look forward to working closely with you in the future, so thank you. Okay, well, before we go back to Fenton as the mover, um, I think it's all been covered. Everyone stole my thunder, Sam. You've done a great job. Um, I think Peter Bevan put it really nicely, um, bringing us together as we should be um, together. Um, we had a very difficult period leading up to it, and um, you've done a marvellous job, and Chris, really, and you've really stepped up running, no doubt about that, and um, done a tremendous job. Um, <coughs> um, I guess I have to say this. Um, I still have enormous difficulty reconciling how you can invest $80 million, um, into a project that doesn't meet your SOI, but... Um, that's something that I'm going to battle with forever, I guess. Um, so, um, and um, what uh, the majority of council will rule on the day. So, but well done, and I really appreciate um, you coming along today. So, Fenton, um, do you want to wind up? Do you get second sa statement? <laughs> <laughs> no, Chair. Tempting, tempting though it may be. Um, I think it's all been said. I do like the pictures uh, at the bottom there. That's uh, the Big Easy, looks like. That was me and the missus panting halfway around the course. There's somewhere taking a breather, but uh, no, well done. And um, yeah, look forward to working with you guys in the future. Okay, we're moving all the um, resolutions then. All in favour? Aye. All right, against, uh, passed. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <coughs> now, councillors, we're gonna have lunch at um, um, 12.15, so we're going to move to the next item on the agenda, which is um, Matariki. Governance structure. We should get through this quickly because we have already been through it. Thanks, Chair, if I, uh, you, yeah. if I may. Yeah, um, five minutes. Even less. <laughs> uh, well, we've just lost our uh, we've just lost Alistair King, who's the uh, program manager for Matariki, who uh, who sat through uh, two hours of the annual plan process, waiting to uh, present <laughs> to the workshop. Um, oh no, he's, so he's back now. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to call um, Dr. King um, um, up. Um, he may not be um, aware that um, of your earlier discussion around the brevity of these um, these papers, but um, as you. Is the word. Alistair, how can you, can you, we've been through all this, um, can you get us through and or take questions and accept us as being read? What do you want to talk, you want to talk about the governance structure particularly? So we can, we can take this as, as being read and, uh, and take questions. There's been no changes in this paper to the, um, to the, to the workshop um, paper that was presented. Uh, I know there were a couple of issues that were raised through that workshop. Um, I can either address those now or address them if they um, continue as questions, but. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Alistair, you're driving this, are you? You're Currently, so, yes. Yeah. So for for everybody, um, I'm the I'm the current driver in the, in the position of the project manager for um, all the current actions. Um, obviously, Wayne Jack's the driver of the, the the selling of the process for the actual delivery model model function. Okay, um, I just have a quick uh, the yep. um, <coughs> the three council um, this this Matariki board, which is a governance structure. That's they are in control of Matariki. Really, they're the governors. Um, I hear um, on the Coomera vine that, um, that um, other councils are thinking about putting their CEs in here, not governors. Is that true? Because it won't work. 
you know. This, this has to be governors in here. So I'm making a statement, but I'm sick and tired of all the, the riffraff that's going all around us. This is a good idea, and we're supporting it, but it has to be right. It has to be led by the leaders of our region. <coughs> so can you tell me if that true, is that urban myth true? Um, I'm not aware of it being true or untrue. I mean, all, all I know is that the governance group itself made up of the 12 members. Um, I don't think that the paper outlines, and I'm not aware of any discussions about who are the members who make up that governance group as yet. I think that's a TBA currently. That's what? T oh, T TBA. 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 <laughs> Sorry, as to, who, as to who those members will be on that board. Well, it's the most the crucial thing. The most crucial thing is that green circle, who's it in is. that green circle. I agree. Because they are the people, the leaders of this community that are going to drive this forward and have the <coughs> mana, the mana to drive it forward. Otherwise it'll just fall in a big heap. I'm just telling you. Point that. Taken. Any other comments or questions? I was just wondering, did um, Alison, did you have a presentation? Because we haven't met you before and so it's nice to have you in front of us. But was there a presentation or something that you wanted to set off, set the scene with? Um, I did have a presentation. I briefly am prepared for today, but in the interest of time, I, I can put it up or not. I mean, I, it, was just, I was, it was only three or four slides We've in the interest of... We've talked about, Mary. Do you, yeah. you want more presentations on it? Well, I just take the point um, on board that if we have people, guests who turn up and they've prepared presentations, they've, they've gone to the trouble, then I would certainly have been interested to hear it. Okay. Alistair, how much can you, how quickly can you get it? about three slides. Honestly. I'm sorry I that I had, a while, I had I, one presented. I apologise to you if, you if I've been rude, but I'm completely over this, you know. Um, so, um, so, can I ask a question while that's all going on? Microphone? How much money we're putting in? The budget on page 19. And I notice there are two holes in it. Um, one is a sponsor, $155,000, and the other is other agency funding of $88,000. And I'm wondering how close you've got to filling those two holes. Sorry, I've covered that one. Um, so the question is the, um, the, the $155,000 sponsor. Yep. Uh, that's projected to remain. Um, to remain as what? To remain as is still received. So that really reflects the funding that Business Hawks Bay gets externally from um, its, uh, its sponsors and in-kind service. Um, so so that's that been found, is what you're saying? That's my understanding, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, th so the hole you're talking about remains the 88,000, and um, I don't know if that's still a hole or... <coughs> Um, there's, there's certainly conversations with the DHB on that um, as a funder for the social inclusion model that they will come to the party on the majority of that money. That's right. my understanding. Okay, so you've got a level of confidence that this budget can be achieved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Sorry, um, the Chairman's just departed very briefly. Y yes, um, <coughs> I, I wasn't able to stay through the discussion the other day. But um, <coughs> Business Hawks Bay is in sort of a holding pattern for a year. That's right. <coughs> well, so the Matariki board would, it's intended, it would take over the function of the business, the business Hawks Bay board, or would replace the Business Hawks Bay board? Uh, my understanding is it won't replace the Business Hawks Bay board. Business Hawks Bay still exists as an entity and has, um, and has certain functions and it also is an entity that um, does draw funds from outside of the council um, so and, funding. And it, it has some um, responsibilities under the Matariki plan. So Business and, Hawks Bay right? yeah, Absolutely. So prior to uh, this um, arrangement, um, Business Hawks Bay's well, this, this council tasked Business Hawks Bay with leading regional collaboration across <coughs> economic development, which was very much um, a transition from the, 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 the uh, changes in the aftermath of Venture Hawks Bay. So the, now that we have Matariki and we have an action plan and we have a proposal here to um, create effectively a new collaboration vehicle, uh, which is described in the, in the governance function, then Business Hawks Bay effectively, in my view, has kind of taken a step to the side and possibly a step down where they will be responsible for delivering on, on, on a number of key actions. 
okay. within the strategy. Yeah, that, uh, and that's okay, uh, and I think it could work because I, I do agree with this distributive and collaborative approach as opposed to a power of one type um, organisation uh, which and those organisations have had a track record over the years of ultimately failing. Um, but i uh, just got to be careful that um, there is a rationalisation, uh, th there's a rationale on this and there are not too many um, <coughs> Standalone entities that are going to put, have their hands out for us to fund. Yeah, look, absolutely, and I think we're on a continuum here. And I think better make your presentation, eh? Okay, thanks, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, in the interest of time, there's only about three or four slides um, to run through, and it was really uh, when I prepared these slides just um, a couple of days ago. It was really in interest, I suppose, of just stimulating conversation around them, so people. Um, it was more about having the facility answer the questions at the end. So, I mean, as We've had the conversations already. The difficulty in establishing a delivery model, um, which such a large and diverse group of stakeholders involved, um, all with different agendas. Um, so that has been a challenge. Um, but it's it's believed that this framework provides an opportunity for all the participants that are operating within um, Motoriki um, to, to have an equitable and fair representation within the process. Um, so. It's the only it's the only model in the country which has a, a true EWI partnership. Um, and that's a given. And the other big point with this model too is that it's the first model, and it will be the first model within the country, which includes social inclusion. Um, and just to put people's or councillors' minds at, at ease on this one, I'd argue, and it has been argued by others too, that the current Matariki model already has an element of social inclusion. Um, it has a, one major theme running through it already, where a number of actions are have a social inclusion theme attached to them. So um, those people would argue that we're already doing it anyway. Um, so to include social inclusion is only an addition and a formal, formal recognition that that process already exists. Um, obviously, uh, REDS model is not a REDS model without business inclusion. So this model with the business, new creation of the Business Leaders Forum. So the Business Leaders Forum has three um, chairpersons um, on the Governance Committee. So um, that works well. And I presented a couple of days ago to the Business Hawks Bay Board. And so in principle, they're in agreement um, as Tom was I would just reiterate Tom's comments before that they're they're in agreement and the 155,000 um, sponsorship money that they have that will continue under the new arrangement. Um, coming back to the governance group itself, um, it's important to note that that's the group which really has the um, the overview of all the identified projects which exist within the model. So uh, currently we've got 47 actions which are currently um, within within the operation, um, and they also have have the ability to obviously overview new projects um, if, as, if and when they come into the uh, Matariki program also. So quite a lot of responsibility that, it, that, is, that is attached to being a governance group member. Um, it's obviously got the, the governance, the, obviously the Matariki functionality area and the project management. Um, so that's one of the, what, that's one of the outturns of this new function. So that's one, and the requirements of the funding regime, is, uh, to, and we'll come to that when pe if people have the, uh, taken the opportunity to look at the, the actual funding uh, model itself and what it does fund and the, and the resources that it does get attached to. And obviously the hardest part, I suppose, with the whole, and, and working through the process was just working, well, there is a recognition that, that it, there's a democratic process which is underlying this whole thing, there's a three-year election process, um, and there's finite funding realities that we will ha have to adhere to as well. Um, the final point I, and I would make is that what Marjoriki doesn't do is it doesn't absolve councils um, or any council from their own responsibilities for economic development for their own communities. Um, there's a clear demarcation that exists between what Matariki does um, and what councillors are required to do in terms of their communities. Um, and that's one, again, that's one of the responsibilities for the governance board um, for Motoriki is to keep clear that, that what that demarcation line is. Questions? And it's questions. Oh, Neil, so well, it's more more of a comment, but I do agree with the chairman that um, the uh, well, the mayoral forum, including our chair, should be nominating the members of the uh, the council members of the Matariki board, and uh, 
ideally they should be at the highest political level unless uh, th that person or that office holder decides to, to delegate. Um, and the other thing is that, boy, you've got a heap of people in here and, I mean, we face, as an organisation, we face the same thing too with all of these people in um, advisory, um, advisory governance roles are clipping the ticket that, that, that these people in here should be encouraged when they can to cover their own costs. Yes, sorry, membership of the governance group, it's a, it's a voluntary, um, there's no remuneration that, that attached to any of the membership of the Madariki board. Sorry? There's no, there's no remuneration that gets attached to being a member of the remuneration board. Or the, the Matariki Forum? Matariki Board, in the same, yeah, sorry. <coughs> same, with the forum? Uh, same with the forum. Yeah. Okay. Just see how the time goes. Um, so, uh, Neil, you had a question, did you? Yes, I, I was interested in, you, you mentioned something about election process and democracy. What, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, I suppose in development of the model, we had, it's, the, it's the political process which runs through the theme. Um, we've not only had to deal with the five councils, but there's, um, there's an election process which runs um, for the um, election of the mayors within that, and I suppose that's the input as we were talking about before of those mayors into the, such a process. Um, so there's no election. There's no election process. No, no sorry, no. I didn't mean to confuse that point. No, there's no there's no election of um, the board members sure. per se. So the the, the dem democratic representation is via. The council's three appointees on there. Is that how that works? Yeah. Do you want to answer that one, Tom? Or? So uh, I think it's a, it's a question is how does how do those three people get selected no, and elected? No, no, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I'm making an assumption that the council, the, the the local government representation on this board uh, is via three council appointees. Is that correct? Um, and when we go to the funding scenario, we've got those three rep councillors, councils contributing 335.5 thousand. Is that how that works? 470. Yep. Matter of fact, four, 470 is is the contribution from councils. 155 is is that the three representatives from? From business, is that sponsor of business Hawks Bay? Yeah. Was there ever a sense of you know user pay or free lunch or you know how, how, how do you, how do you get to stump up with the money and 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 get representation or not stump up with the money and get representation? So if I could have a, a crack at, at that, um, so, so the point is absolutely um, is understood. The Seem we've had so much talk about capital structure review. If, if I liken this to, you know, one dollar buys one vote, um, you know, shares in a company, um, you know, councils have hard equity in this process, um, and so we, it does from the face of it look like we're putting most of the money in, but we only get a, we don't get a direct um, representation or re representation that reflects that. So, so on one hand we have our hard equity. I think the business community feels like they have a lot of sweat equity um, in this process. And, and I think it goes to reiterate that this is, a, this is a platform to deliver on actions and probably by far the biggest impact on those actions will probably ultimately come from the business community. Um, and so there's a lot of significant volunteer time that's put in, um, has in the past by Business Hawks Bay and by other members. And then you take it to the other extreme, um, where you've got you know quite very strong iwi representation um, in this model, and uh, very little financial contribution um, there. And, and without wanting to murder the analogy, I mean they feel like they've you know they put a lot of inequity, or they're representing a degree of inequity there because they don't have the resources um, necessarily to fund um, their participation. So, so I absolutely understand, you know, that dollar for dollar, it doesn't look right. But I think just it's the nature of a very widespread, large collaboration process that it's just as important to have that wide range of representation um, and the risk of that or the, what suffers there is how direct or proportional that representation is.
just uh, so is the regional planning committee Māori members seen this sort of overview? Yeah. So uh, Te Kei is the uh, overall branch of all the members. So uh, it was just a question, it's not trying to pull you to bits or anything. <laughs> and I know how difficult it is. Can I, can I perhaps answer that? <coughs> it hasn't formally been to the Regional Planning Committee because it's not perhaps covered by their terms of reference. However, the various treaty representatives that sit around the RPC table have all been informed of it separately. Yep. I just know that Two Tor's not there and Rogama Wahine is um, going on there. I guess we've rattled this around and um, it's not perfect, nothing is perfect, um, but I think we have a consensus that we have to get in behind this. Um, so I'll move that we do move the recommendation to um, support it. Matariki, do we have a seconder? Seconder from Fenton. And I'll take the um, privilege of speaking first. As I said, it's not perfect. Um, it, it's really, and this is something that challenges our whole region, is that we had this messy um, amalgamation debate um, and we've never really been able to sit down and have a post-amalgamation discussion, um, which we need to do because uh, there is a post-amalgamation view of the world uh, that is required. Uh, because we are a, a region that needs to work closer together. And I guess uh, this goes a little bit um, on the way, on the journey of achieving that. So, th and that's the reason that I would support it. it. But having said that, it is absolutely essential that that board has the right people on it. Absolutely essential that the the region sees the Matariki board as being as being people that represent it, and so I can see how the uh, the mayoral forum will pick th um, three, um, and they represent um, the leaders of our region. I can see how um, Iwi Hapu will pick three, and hopefully they will pick three r prominent leaders. I worry about um, business Hawkes Bay. Who will they pick? because, um, you know, you really want to pick Rod Jury if you can, and will they? Um, you need le business leaders that really, that when the, re the business community looks at them, they are the leaders' business, they reflect what you're trying to achieve. Um, central government, um, I guess that'll be a couple of MPs, will it? Will it? Well, you see, it won't work. And so I, w I just want to really um, um, make a strong statement here. It has to be a two MPs. So you've got to get the MPs together and say, which one are you going to do this? It cannot be a bureaucrat because it won't work. And the independent chair, well, that, is, uh, th that person will have to be paid because that is a huge job. So I understand the rest of those people don't get paid. But the independent chair will need to get paid and that person will have to reflect the mana of our region. God knows who that is. So and I want to really say that unless that board, unless pe our public and everybody can look up and say, yep, they do look like the leaders of our region, it won't work. So, Denton. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly with everything you say. I, I just make a, is that a first? conditional point <laughs> every day, Chair, every day, inspirational. Um, but just make a conditional point here that these guys, <laughs> you know, you, you're giving the message to these guys, but they, they're just doing their job. They're the foot soldiers trying yeah, to pull us together. And, well, yeah, but anyway, look, I, I totally agree, and I think the challenge actually comes back to um, to start with at the Merrill Forum, and I think that's the place to start to, you know, get some grunt around this stuff. Certainly, the biggest spenders of the of the group being the councils. So. 
Um, the challenge is uh, sits in your ta in your chair. Only chair. three, only for three. Yeah, well, th three. But the mayoral forum is uh, is is a good vehicle to um, to deliver on what you've just so eloquently put. Thank you, Neil. No, oh, I got Paul. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just um, wishing to uh, affirm your 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 thoughts and uh, Councillor uh, Wilson's thoughts on the matter regarding the representation and the makeup of the Mataruki Board. Also, like to um, just express my disappointment, um, which is something I raised at the, at the workshop. Around, uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, much. I mean, there's a social focus and there's a uh, economic focus, but there doesn't appear to be any sort of environmental focus in the makeup of this um, Manariki governance framework and, and the way that it operates. Um, but in saying that, I recognise that it's you know this is not a this is not the perfect will. I don't know whether we could ever get one, um, but I will be supporting supporting it because we need to move on with it. Thank you. I, I'm happy to support the recommendation. Al, um, it's nice to see you here. I wouldn't blame you if you don't want to come back ever again. But, um, but also, Tom, it looks like you may have a, a congratulations. You've had a promotion, have you? Acting something in the title here? So I picked that up too. One of the challenges that we have around this council table, and, and you've hit it when you've said that um, this announcement was the culmination of nearly two years with broad, deep regional engagement, and actually it didn't include the regional council. The council, elected councillors were deliberately kept out of the loop. So the he, um, hence, the, we haven't got the buy-in here, and that's the dissatisfaction that you are see, seeing and feeling and hearing around the table because we got it, had it served up to us, and um, we sort of wondered where we'd been for the, the two years of, of consultation. So so I'm, I'm sure you've been privy to that. but. Um, yeah, I think we, we're getting there and, and you've heard some, some loud messages today. So thanks for coming along and, and speaking to us, sharing your presentation. I do appreciate the work you guys have done, but you, you, I think um, Debbie did um, tell you our, the fru enormous frustration that this council's had with us from the very beginning. It foisted on us, and we were foisted on a on a meeting in in, in Napier, and we've never got over it really. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, we've never really got over it. But but we do see that this is something that needs to be done, but it has to be done right. Otherwise, you know, Alan talks about you know these things they they come and go in twenty twenty and all these things they and they just disappear and this is an opportunity for us to do something really well and really right without it disappearing. So well done, thanks. And we'll break for lunch. <laughs> no, I was, I was thanking them. No, I was just thanking them. Thank you very much, guys. We're going to stop for lunch.